All that people, you know what time it is. Tuesday, fat loss tip of the week coming to you from Skinny Jalof. Let's go. How was your week? I'm gonna go right into it. So today, what are we talking about? This is something that every single human being struggles with, whether you are trying to lose weight or not. Are you ready for it? Cravings, food cravings and how to manage them, right? So today I'm going to be walking you through about nine or ten tips, actionable tips that you can start using right now to manage your food cravings. Coming right up. Why am I saying that? I am live. <laughs> I'm used to doing um, videos for YouTube. So anyways, so number one tip, eat balanced meals daily. When I look at people's plates, most of the time, what is lacking the most is protein. Fill up your plate with more protein. Protein keeps you fuller for longer. And if you're going to if you're going to have fats, you need to make sure that it's healthy fats because fats are actually great for keeping you fuller for longer. Hi. So when you eat a balanced meal, you're less likely to be hungry um, when you shouldn't be hungry. And that actually helps you to keep cravings at bay. OK, I have a list here. So if you see my eyes going somewhere else, it's because I have my list and I don't want to forget anything. Number two, this is very, very important. If you if you have if you have um, if you eventually slip up and you give in to your craving, which sometimes is really what you need to do. Honestly, one thing you need to remember is everything in moderation. But if you eventually, if you find yourself that, okay, you had a little too much of something, please, you need to do this one thing. You need to forgive yourself and just move on. You can't beat yourself down because what's going to happen is you're likely to find yourself in a cycle where you feel guilty. And so you go to food. Hello. You go to food to help you feel less, less guilty. And then you feel even more guilty for eating that food. And then you go to even more food right? And then it just goes on and you're in this vicious cycle. So don't do that. If you find that you've gone overboard, just get right back on it, okay? It's a craving. You're, you're human. You're normal. You will probably slip up from time to time, all right? Accept it as a normal part of living. You cannot control cravings, but you can control your reactions to them. There's a difference, okay? As a human being, you are going to crave certain things. Especially if it's something that maybe your brain remembers that, oh my gosh, this thing actually gives me so much satisfaction. Okay, or maybe it's something that you've not had in a while. So whenever that happens, you need to predetermine, like, what is my reaction to this thing going to be? So stop fighting the fact that, okay, you know, I, I don't want to have this craving. I don't want to have this craving. You're just, it's almost like you're, you're, you're fighting, you're wrestling with the air. Like, don't bother. You're just wasting your time. Leave it alone. It's a craving. How are you going to react to it, though? So tip four. Um, you can look at cravings as a suggestion to eat. Not all the time, though, and I'll go into detail on another tip, on another tip. But use, if you have to eat when you have a craving, see it as just that. It is not a reason to overindulge. Let's say, for example, you, you have a sweet, a craving for something sweet and, and crunchy. So you are probably looking for a cookie, right? Um, have a cookie if you're going to have it. But... You don't need to have five. Seriously, that one cookie is probably enough for you. Okay? So always just look at cravings as what they are. It is not an invitation to go crazy and have six more of something that you should really have just had one. Then, remember I said sometimes maybe it's an invitation to eat, sometimes it's not. You, when you have a craving, 
something you need to pause and actually ask yourself am i actually hungry most of the time you're probably not hungry you're just having a craving if you wait a few minutes it will probably pass and you and here is how sometimes i know that okay am i hungry am i actually really hungry i ask myself do i want an apple do i want chicken breast if the answer is no yeah no you're not hungry and there are different and i'll talk about this in another live um the hunger skill right knowing wh where you need to be you shouldn't be at a place where you are extremely hungry as in ravenous or where your stomach is grumbling and sh you, sh you also don't want to be where you are so full you feel like a cow or someone with a with a dome of a stomach that you can't even walk around anymore you want to be somewhere in the middle where you're just starting to feel the hunger pang or you feel satisfied okay or you feel just full so whenever you when, when, whenever you have yourself in that particular band you're less li like basically when you have that craving you need to think about okay in what part of the band am i in am i am i feeling ravenously hungry am i feeling satisfied am i just is my hunger pang just starting to come on sometimes i have observed that uh, the cravings might come at the time when it's almost time to eat but almost time for my next meal but guess what if i give in to that craving eventually i'm going to just really give into it to satisfy my hunger and i forfeit my meal which would have been more wholesome and just better for me overall all right another thing is we want to stop labeling food as good or bad okay food is not good or bad it's not the food that is the problem it's the frequency and the amount that we have the quantity that we have that is the problem okay so when you have a craving for something don't tell your head oh i'm craving i'm craving something bad i'm craving um cheese and crackers i'm craving ice cream and those are bad for me that right there puts us in trouble because there is something about the forbidden fruit guys there is something about the forbidden fruit <laughs> just the fact that we know it's bad or we label it as bad it's almost like we want it more it becomes all of a sudden it becomes more attractive so don't do that to yourself don't label food as good or bad food is just delicious there are just some of it that maybe if you have a certain amount of it it's gonna have a certain effect and that's just it that's life too much rain will cause flood but rain is also great for growing our crops and all of that and keeping the ground um the ground wet hi zoe um so yeah don't label food as good or bad just remember that it's all about everything in moderation okay now tip number seven i know I, I wasn't counting but don't 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 worry i have my list it's number seven <laughs> tip number seven let's talk about the five d's okay if you don't remember anything from this remember the five d's of food cravings number one when you have a craving delay okay delay taking any action whatsoever for about 10 minutes studies have shown that it takes an average of seven minutes for a craving to go away i know that personally for me i have some cravings that last up to months <laughs> especially when it's something that i can't really access like maybe it's in another country or something i'm going to continue to have that craving until i eat it but seriously just day-to-day -day cravings not the one i just described you wait 10 minutes most of the time you see that it passes away now if it doesn't pass away like i said earlier there is a high chance that you are not hungry okay it's just a high chance that you you just need a distraction you know like distract yourself with something else call a friend watch 10 minutes of your favorite show hello daniela watch um, 10 minutes of your favorite show um read a book listen to music just change up your state because sometimes when we crave stuff what we really want is something to change our mental states 
and you will not believe it, but moving physiology, changing physiology actually changes our mental state. Sometimes it's not another bar of chocolate that you need. It's not another lint chocolate ball that you need. You know those lint chocolate balls? They will put you in trouble, honey. You keep one, you have five. <laughs> but anyways, sometimes it's not, that's not what you need. You just need to get up and move your body or just step outside for 10 minutes in the sun. And if it's at night, maybe you just need to do something else. Go and wash your face, go and brush your teeth. That's another one. If you brush your teeth, guess what? You have that toothpaste taste in your mouth. You're not trying to have ice cream after that, ew. And if you are, we're, we can't be friends. We can't be friends. Then you also, the third D is um, distance. Now, I know that some of you live with other people, like your children, other family members that don't necessarily maybe eat the same way you eat. So there might be all kinds of, you know, tempting things all around you. But as much as you can, you want to keep a distance between you and some of those things that you tend to crave a lot. I always say avoidance is easier than resistance. When you have, when I, when, just think about it, you have right beside you, right beside you, the pack of cookies that you love so much and you develop a craving for it. Honey, there's a 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
you're less likely to actually curb the craving. That was your own way of reacting to it. And that that craving might just be a result of you being bored. Or maybe you're stressed. Maybe you're anxious about something. And your brain just calculates that, hey, the last time you had ice cream, you felt so good. You were so comforting. You felt calm. Maybe we should have that. Maybe we'll be calm again. Don't listen to it. Don't. There are other ways to keep calm. Yeah. How about you breathe? How about you stop wor- Just stop it. Just stop worrying about that thing that is making you anxious. How about you take your mind off of it and then you do something else altogether, right? These are other things that you can do when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling bored, when you're feeling stressed. You don't always have to go to that craving. So this is pretty much it. I went through 10 different ways to control, no, not control, to manage your food cravings. If there is anything that you took out of this, let it be that you cannot control cravings. However, you can control your reaction to the cravings. The 10 tips that I just went on gave you how you can control your reaction to the cravings hope this was helpful and um if you guys have any questions let me know hello i am just wrapping up so archana you're gonna have to catch up on the replay i gave 10 tips on managing food cravings so if you guys don't have any questions anybody anybody All right, if that's it, have an awesome week and tell those cravings who's boss or boss lady. (laughs) All right, bye.